Hello everyone. If you've watched my Dear Exerbia video and my livestream with Pi, then you know I've been working on a documentary called Experiment A. It's named after the pseudoscientific experiment that Alex, aka Exerbia, did on Pi, an autistic woman from the Netherlands. I've been investigating Exerbia's abuse during Experiment A for about 8 months now. People have been asking me questions about the Exerbia case, so I wanted to give a little more information about it today as well as offer a witness statement later on about where the case is at right now. First of all, some background information. Pi and Exerbia met in 2016 online when he was an unknown YouTuber. He had 2,597 subscribers when he first subscribed to her channel. She had 10,400 at the time. She was working as a photographer among other things. She'd also been published. When Exerbia and Pi met, he lied to Pi and pretended that he was a former employee of the Large Hadron Collider, also known as CERN, and that he'd worked on some kind of experiments there. CERN actually confirmed in 2017 that he never worked for them. By pretending to be a scientist who'd worked at CERN, Exerbia tricked Pi into collaborating with him to participate in Experiment A. However, he made her take part in this experiment without informed consent. As someone rightfully pointed out in my comments section on my Dear Exerbia video, the Amiz guy says, In my philosophy of science class, the main thing we saw related to consent was these four points. Someone must know they're consenting to something. They must be capable of consenting. They must know to an extent what it is they're consenting to. And they must be able to stop at any point. This is what you need to remember about Experiment A. See, it didn't happen with informed consent. During Experiment A, Pi believed Exerbia and herself were researching so-called organic synchronicity, meaningful coincidences based on a concept by Carl Jung. Now, what is synchronicity? Well, let's say your friend tells you that a particular song reminds them of you. They send you the song and it's the very first time that you've ever heard it. All of a sudden, you start to hear this song all over the place and weirdly enough, there could even be times where you're thinking of this friend and then randomly that song comes on. This is organic synchronicity, and it pops up a lot more often than people might think. If your friend sends you the song and then manipulates events to ensure the song is played, making you believe it was a coincidence, and then going as far as to tell you that this means your life is predetermined, or that you and this friend are soul bonded somehow, that would be a made up synchronicity. Something that was orchestrated, to scare you, or make you feel as though your life is determined, and you have no control over your destiny. This has been used by many cults before to manipulate and control their followers and make them do or believe things they otherwise wouldn't have. During Experiment A, Pi agreed to research and capture organic synchronicity. Exerbia, however, started making up synchronicities to Pi. That went on for months. When she eventually started having panic attacks and nightmares due to the strange coincidences that kept happening, Exerbia didn't stop the experiment. He kept it going kept talking to Pi about synchronicity, trying to convince her that they had to find a science behind it, and that it potentially was the most important thing that they were trying to do. This you could hear in the audio clip that I played in Dear Exerbia. Well, now you think we're doing uh, this podcast, the YouTube stuff, whatever. There's no reason why... Uh, I, I think the most important thing we might be doing is trying to prove synchronicities. This might be the most valuable contribution we ever make to everything, to knowledge, to science, to essentially everything. There are many more audios like this and messages where Exerbia talks about Experiment A that will be featured in the documentary. So for those out there who believe that there's no evidence for this experiment, you are in for a surprise. There's plenty. All you gotta do is wait for the documentary and draw your own conclusions afterwards. What you should know right now, though, is that Pi fell into a depressive episode during Experiment A when Exerbia was creating these fake synchronicities around her. There's evidence Exerbia knew about this depressive episode that Pi was going through. In a Skype conversation from September 21st, 2016, Pi wrote to Exerbia. Let me quote her. I've never in my life experienced anything like this, and I've experienced depression from age 14 to 19 very severely, but never anything like this. Days after, on September 25th, 2016, Exerbia actually sent Pi a video about a woman who wanted to have euthanasia and die. He sent Pi this video knowing that she was going through a depressive episode. So not only was he making up synchronicity to Pi and kept doing it while he knew her mental health was declining, he also started to talk to her about death and suicide while at it. After that, a crime happened in October 2016 in Bulgaria, where Exerbia lives. He sexually abused Pi. 
Subsequently, she was hospitalized for acute stress disorder and being suicidal. Exerbia then started threatening and blackmailing Pi in December 2016 to keep her silent about the abuse. 